electronics if you are an electronics engineering graduate then there is a golden opportunity for you to work with isro because the isro notifications are out and there is 131 post for electronics engineering graduate the advertisement was out on 15th of october and the last date for application is 4th of november that is 4th of november 2019 the exam is scheduled on next year that is january 12th of next year that is next year first month itself the exam will be happening and you should always try for this post because they are offering a very very high package that is 56,000 rupees per month that is a very good package and also the criteria for choosing uh, or for applying for this post is you should be either BE or beta graduate with a 65 percentage of mark and in CGPA it should be 6.84 out of 10 if it is in CGPA. Okay, so this is all about the notification. The last date is 4th of November. So please hurry up if you are an engineering graduate and the age limit is 35 years and there is age relaxation for the reserved categories. Okay, so please don't forget to apply for this post. And from today, we'll be doing videos for the preparation of this exam that is ISRO SC Engineer for Electronics Post. Okay. So today we are going to see some of the previous questions which are asked in the ISRO exams and that is for the electronics branch. The first question which we are going to discuss today is this. Electron mobility of the following intrinsic elements in descending order is. So there are uh, there is a list of intrinsic elements given and uh, an order of the electron mobility is given and we have to find out which is in the descending order of electron mobility so uh, we know that there are two type of semiconductors so this question is basically from the semiconductor theory okay so there are two type of semiconductors intrinsic semiconductor and extrinsic semiconductor intrinsic semiconductor means the semiconductor in the most pure form is called an intrinsic semiconductor and when we add impurities uh, into the semiconductor that is the intrinsic semiconductor and the in order to change the conductivity properties of that semiconductor we do this and this is called doping and hence we get extrinsic semiconductors from the intrinsic semiconductor so that is a semiconductor theory basics so here they are asking for the electron mobility order okay so the electron mobility of the semiconductors that is if we take the gallium arsenide, it is 85,000 and for silicon, it is 38,000 and for germanium, it is 13,000. So all these are intrinsic semiconductors and these are the electron mobility and the unit of electron mobility is centimeter square per volt second. So this is the unit of the electron mobility. Electron mobility means the speed of electron motion present in the semiconductor. Okay, so if we see this order, that is the decreasing order, right? Sorry, yeah, this is a decreasing order. That is from gallium arsenide, then silicon, then germanium. So, which is the descending order of the uh, electron mobility? That is starting from the highest to the smallest. Okay, so that is gallium arsenide. Silicon, germanium, right? So, gallium arsenide, silicon and germanium is the decreasing order. So, the correct answer for this question is option B. The next question which we are going to discuss is this. Common base current gain of PNP bipolar transistor is 0 0.99. The common emitter current gain of the transistor is what? A101, B0.01. C99, D1. So, which is the common emitter currently? So, if you don't know anything about transistors or transistor configurations, let me just tell you that there are three basic configurations of transistors. That is the common base, common emitter and common collector configuration. That is three way of uh, arranging or connecting the transistor. That is in common base, which is base is common. When the emitter is common to other two terminals and collector is common to the other two terminals. There are three current gains for each of this connection. The current gains are alpha, beta and gamma. Okay, so for common 
base, the gain is given as alpha for common emitter, the gain is given as beta and for common collector, it is given as gamma. So these are the three current gains when the transistors are connected in the three configurations. Now what is a current gain means how much the current is amplified the ratio is called or that uh, unit is called the current gain. Okay, so for the three configurations that is for common base, for common emitter and for the common collector, the current gains are denoted as alpha, beta and gamma. Now there is a relation between this alpha, beta and gamma. Let me just tell you that the common base gain that is alpha, alpha equal to beta by 1 plus beta. This is a relation between alpha and beta. Okay. Now, the common emitter gain which is beta is given as beta equal to alpha by 1 minus alpha. So, the advantage of studying these properties or this relationship is that if a question is given, you don't have to go for finding the currents and all those things. If you directly know the relationship means you can substitute and find the result. And also gamma is given as 1 plus beta. Okay. So these are the three relationship between relationships between the three current gains in the three configurations. Okay. So that is the common base, common emitter and the common collector configuration. Alpha, beta and gamma. Now the question is very simple. They have given the common base gain which is alpha. They are given. They are given. They are asking for common emitter current gain. Which is a common emitter current gain? Beta. We have alpha and we need beta. Simple right? So I can remove these things if you have noted. Okay. So I will remove these things. Now I have to find beta. I have my alpha which is 0 0.99 by 1 minus 0 0.99 which is equal to 0 0.99 by 1 minus 0 0.99 is 0 0.01 right it is equal to 9.99 by 0 0.01 is we can remove both the points or decimal we can remove and the value is 99 and the correct answer for this question is C99 is your answer. Consider a sequence x of n 2, 4, 6, 8, 0, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. This is a sequence. Downsample the sequence by 3 and then upsample by 2. You will get what? 2, 0, 0, 0, 0 7, 0. 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 7, 0, 0, 0. C two zero eight zero three zero nine zero or D two two eight eight three three nine nine. So which will be your resultant sequence? So this is a question from digital signal processing. So you have to know about downsampling and upsampling. Okay, if you don't know anything about downsampling and upsampling, let me just tell you the basics. Okay, so if you are given a sequence like this and you are set to downsample the signal by any number n means you have to pick out the nth elements or the multiples of nth element so from this question see you are given a sequence like this i'm just writing the sequence 2 4 6 8 0 1 3 5 7 and 9 right so you are given a sequence like this and you are being told to downsample the sequence by 3 means you have to pick the every third element. So starting from this 2, you have to first pick this 2, then 1, 2, 3, this 8, again 1, 2, 3, this 3, again 1, 2, 3, which is your last number, which is a 9. So if you downsample the signal by 3, you will get 2, 8, 3 and 9. Okay, so this is the downsampling by a factor or by a number of 3. Now, if you are being told to downsample the signal by 2 means, you are going to pick the every second element. That is starting from this, then 
one two then one two then one two then one two and here there is no element so you can ignore it or just add a zero okay so this is how you have to down sample the signal okay you can eliminate this value since there is no second element left so the resultant sequence will be two six zero three seven like that okay so if you down sample the signal by two means you are picking out every second sample or multiples of two you are picking out multiples of two means the position i'm telling i'm not telling about the values of the signal i'm just telling the positions that is every multiples of two whichever position it is coming that value you are going to take rest of the values you are going to ignore so that is called down sampling here we have to down sample the signal by by a number of three so again i'm going to down sample the signal by three first i'm going to take my first element is two which is two here then one two three i'm going to take eight as the second element then one two three the three as the second element then five seven nine nine is my last element so this is my down sampled signal by a down sampling factor of three again they are saying and then up sampled by two. Now we have to think about up sampling here. So we have uh, discussed about down sampling. We are now going to discuss about up sampling. Up sampling means increasing the number of samples, whereas down sampling means reducing or decreasing the number of samples. When you are going to uh, up sample a signal by any factor, say L, you are going to add L minus number of L minus one number of zeros in between the samples. So this is your initial signal, right? So if you are being told to upsample the signal, that is this signal, by a factor of L means, you are going to add L minus 1 number of zeros in between these elements. That is in between 2 and 8, you are going to add L minus 1 0. Again, in between 8 and 3, you are going to add L minus 1 0. Again, in between 3 and 9, you are going to add L minus 1 0. Like that, you have to perform. Then you will get your up sampled signal. Okay, here they are telling to up sample the signal by a factor of 2 means 2 minus 1, you have to add 1 0. I hope it is clear. So 2 minus 1 number of zeros I'm going to add in between the present samples. That is 2, 0, 8, 0, 3, 0, and 9. There is no other elements left. So this is your result and signal or your ups, down sampled and up sampled signal will look like this. Let's see which is the option here. Okay, here again you have to add another zero. So you have to add L minus one number of zeros to each sample here. So here again you have to add a zero. Okay, so your correct answer will be option C. It is 2080, 30 and 9, 0. The next question which we are going to discuss is this. Which digital signal processing system is described by the expression y of n equal to 2x of n plus x of n minus 1 plus 2y of n minus 1? Options A stable FIR filter, B A stable IIR filter, C A stable an unstable FIR filter, D an unstable IIR filter. So what is the system described by this equation? Now, uh, this is also from the digital signal processing uh, subject. Now, we have to find whether this is a FIR filter or an IIR filter and whether it is a stable or an unstable system. So, how can you identify whether this is an FIR filter or an IIR filter? For a FIR filter, the output Y of n is the function of the present and past inputs only. So such a system is called a FIR system. Whereas an IIR system, the output function y of n is a function of present and past inputs also past outputs that is if the 
output that is the present output depends on the past outputs also means it is an IAR filter. But if the system output which is a Y of N only depends on the present and the past inputs only means such a system is called a FIR system. Now these two things you have to be very much sure about. That is you have to know these things. If you are studying digital signal processing or if you are studying about filters, you have to know these things. Okay. Output Y of N is a function of present input, past input and past output means this is a, what type of system? This is an IIR system. Okay, so you can eliminate the FIR options both because this is not a FIR system. Now you have to check whether this is a stable system or an unstable system that you have to find out. Okay, so uh, I can remove these things, I guess, because these things you have to keep in mind. Okay, now I'm going to find whether the system is stable or unstable. For that, what I'll do is I'll take the is a transform of this function. I'm going to write it once again y of n equal to 2x of n plus x of n minus 1 plus 2y of n minus 1. Now I'm going to take the Z transform, then y of z equal to 2 x of z plus z raised to minus 1 x of z plus 2 into z raised to minus 1 y of z. Now I'm going to take this y of z term to this side, then I'll get y of z into 1 minus 2 z raised to minus 1 equal to, I'm going to take a x of z from these two terms. That is x of z into 2 plus z raised to minus 1. Now take y of z by x of z and you will get 2 plus z raised to minus 1 by 1 minus 2 z raised to minus 1. Okay, so this is your transfer function now y of z by x of z. Now to find out whether the system is stable or unstable, you have to look for the poles, right? So, poles, how is zeros and poles obtained? Zero is obtaining by finding the roots of the numerator and poles are obtained by finding the roots of the denominator. So, for a checking whether the system is stable or not, you have to determine the poles. So, for that, 1 plus 2 is a raised to minus 1 equal to 0. You have to equate and you will get the pole as 2. Sorry, one. it is 1 minus. So, the pole value is 2. Now the pole value is obtained as 2. So you will get Z equal to 2 as your pole, right? So since the pole value is 2 and since it is out of the unit circle, the system is an unstable system. So how can you find out whether the system is stable or unstable is by looking at the poles. Now how to find the poles and zeros I have already explained in my earlier video. So please do uh, check that video in order to find how to find the poles and zeros, how to plot the po pole zero plot and how to check whether the system is stable or not. Okay, so here since the pole value is 2 and since the pole is lying outside the unit circle means the system is an unstable system and hence the option correct here is option C that is an unstable, sorry option D unstable IAR system. So D is your correct option here. So first well, you have to check whether the system is FIR or IAR and then you have to go for the stability of the system by finding the transfer function. That is just take the ISA transform. Okay. So when you are taking the ISA transform you have you will get your pole and uh, you will uh, find whether the system is stable or unstable. So for this question the correct answer is option D. That is this expression is an expression of a unstable IIR system. These are the some questions which I have included in this video and in the upcoming videos of ISRO preparation we will be doing more questions and whenever we are doing the questions we will be covering the basics of that questions also. Okay I really hope the video was useful so if you are preparing for ISRO please do watch this video and also share this video with your friends and family and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more such videos. Okay.